I recently filmed a wedding with the iPhone 15 Pro, and in this video, I want to tell you about my experience using this phone in a professional setting as a filmmaker, and share with you four pros and two cons of using the iPhone 15 Pro to film weddings. Hey, my name is Matt Johnson, and I also want you to know that I've already made a full behind the scenes video where I show you how I filmed the wedding with the iPhone 15 Pro. I will link to that video up in the corner and down in the video description. Getting right into it then, the first thing that I want to discuss is probably what you have the biggest question about, and that is, how was my experience with the low light when filming with this phone? It has a small sensor, and while iPhones have gotten better in low light photography, how did this phone handle filming a dark wedding reception? Well, here's where I was pleasantly surprised, and this is the first pro of filming with the iPhone 15 Pro, and that is that if you use the main 1X 24 millimeter camera on the phone, it is surprisingly decent in low light. It's no full frame A7S III or FX3, don't get me wrong, but the footage was surprisingly clean and extremely usable. The reception that I was filming had some of the venue lights on for the formal dances, but once the dance floor opened up, all of the other lights were turned off and there were only two spotlights shining on the dance floor. Even with that, the phone handled it like a champ, with the footage still looking quite clean and usable. Now, that said, it's not all sunshine and rainbows because this talk about low light leads us into the first con of using your iPhone to film a wedding, and that is that while the 1X 24mm main lens performs admirably in low light, the same cannot be said for the 5X zoom lens. In short, unless you're filming in broad daylight, I would not expect stellar performance from the 120mm phone lens. This was proved to me time and time again on the wedding day where I was filming the couple outdoors, but it was a cloudy day, it was not as bright as it would have been if the sun had been out, and I could see noise in my footage because the iPhone phone had to raise the ISO a bit to compensate. I could especially see the long lens struggling during the ceremony when the sun had started to set a bit, and there was a moment where I was filming the couple walking down the aisle together, and I switched from the 120mm zoom lens to the wider 24mm main lens, and when I did that, it almost felt like I was filming with two different cameras, because the footage was significantly cleaner and better looking with that wider lens. The reception proved this again whenever I was filming the couple give a toast and the wide angle shot looked so much cleaner than the tight one. In a perfect world, I can't help but wish that the iPhone had a fourth lens that was 50mm or 85mm instead of 120mm that wouldn't punch in quite so much and ideally have a bit larger sensor with better low light performance. Moving on, back to pros of using the iPhone 15 Pro to film a wedding, I absolutely loved how compact and lightweight my setup was for filmmaking. The iPhone is so much lighter than even the lightest mirrorless camera, and whenever you combine that with a lightweight gimbal like the DJI Osmo 6 and a phone case that accepts filters like the Freewell Sherpa that I used all day, it was honestly a dream. Another pro of using the iPhone was that I didn't have to stop filming to switch lenses. I'm someone that typically films weddings with prime lenses, so I oftentimes find myself needing to swap between different focal lengths. But with the iPhone, swapping lenses only takes a simple button press, and this saved me so much time on the wedding day. There was one time in particular that I remember the photographer started to get in my way, and all I had to do was tap to change to a different focal length, and suddenly he wasn't there because I zoomed in so quickly. It's so cool. Back to cons now though, I need to share with you the final con that I experienced when filming with the iPhone 15 Pro, and that was the lack of bokeh that I experienced, regardless of which camera lens that I was using. Keep in mind that this phone has very small camera sensors, which means that cinematic blurred background that you would typically get from an APS-C or full frame camera is much more difficult. Yes, there is a cinematic mode that will artificially add bokeh and mimic filming with a shallow depth of field, but that can introduce a lot of artifacts and I didn't want to risk it. So I did not choose to use that setting when filming the wedding. Because of that, I found that if I used the main camera and got really close to something, I could get a bit of bokeh. I especially noticed this when I was filming flowers before the wedding ceremony, I could scoot up closer and get some bokeh. But in my opinion, the biggest time that I noticed a lack of bokeh was when I was using the longer 120 millimeter lens, because when you're using a bigger mirrorless camera, for example, you can usually expect a longer lens to give you more bokeh. But with the iPhone, that wasn't the case. 
My worst experience with this lack of bokeh came when filming the groom giving a toast, where not only was the footage noisy, like we talked about earlier, in addition, there was an exit sign behind the groom's head. And if I was filming this exit sign with a full frame camera, I have no doubt that the bokeh would have greatly reduced how noticeable this sign would be in the footage. But the iPhone has essentially no bokeh, so the exit sign was very clearly readable behind the person speaking, and it just looked awkward and distracting. So just be aware. In my opinion, I think that the iPhone can work great as a wide angle gimbal camera that doesn't have a lot of bokeh, but once you want to capture footage that looks super cinematic with a lot of depth of field and an extreme blurred background, you're going to want to invest in a different camera. Let's finish now with the last pro that I have from filming with the iPhone 15 Pro, and this pro is one of the biggest in my opinion, and it's just so dang cool. See, instead of filming this wedding with the stock camera app that records massive footage at six gigabytes per minute, I instead chose to use the Blackmagic camera app because that comes with a ton of benefits, three of the biggest being that you have significantly more controls than you do with the stock camera app. You can choose to film in the H.265 codec instead of ProRes, which gives you smaller file sizes. And coolest of all, this has a sort of camera to cloud feature where I set up Blackmagic Cloud on the Blackmagic camera app. So I have an account there now. And I set up this project here as iPhone wedding video, which you can't really see at the top, but it says iPhone wedding video. And now any time that I record video using this phone, any video clips that I record using the Blackmagic camera app, my phone is automatically going to create a proxy of those video files and then upload it to Blackmagic Cloud to my iPhone wedding video project. And whenever I get home to my desktop, I can open up that iPhone wedding video project and the proxy video clips are already going to be there ready to edit. It's mind blowing stuff. The first time I tested this, I set up a cloud project, recorded a few second long video clip, stopped recording, and then I looked over at my computer and 10 seconds later, that video clip was sitting in my Resolve project ready to be edited. It's nuts. Taking it back to this wedding that I just filmed, because I didn't want to completely nuke my phone's data plan, I managed to get the venue's Wi-Fi password, and then as I filmed throughout the day, the Blackmagic camera app would continually back up proxy video clips of everything that I filmed from the wedding to the cloud, and when I got home, all of my clips were there waiting for me. If you're someone that is paranoid about losing your footage and is obsessed with backups like I am, imagine automatically having a backup generated every time that you film nearly instantly. It's so reassuring. Now, to be clear, there are other camera companies working on similar features that you can see in this Blackmagic camera app with Blackmagic Cloud, and I'm really excited for them. You can let me know if you want me to make a video about these camera to cloud capabilities of other cameras. But one thing that I think does make the iPhone special in this regard is that the iPhone has a 5G wireless connection built in, so it can upload footage to the cloud seamlessly, whereas an FX3, for example, doesn't have a built-in wireless modem. Maybe the camera companies should add that? Wouldn't that be cool? Anyways, speaking of things that are cool, if you haven't downloaded my gear guide for wedding filmmakers yet, it is incredibly cool and it is also completely free and will show you the exact gear that I recommend purchasing to film weddings. I would highly recommend checking it out. I will link to it down in the video description. Let me know what you think of these pros and cons. Do you think that the long lens struggling in low light and lack of bokeh are a deal breaker? Comment down below. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.